Hi, my name is Dr. Karen Miller and I'm a veterinarian. I work at Lincoln Animal Hospital and I take care of dogs and cats and I knew I wanted to do that ever since I was probably about six years old. So if that's something that you're thinking about, that could come true for you too. So I'd like to read uh, a book for y'all today that's called A Small Thing But Big. It's by Tony Johnston and we would like to thank the publisher, Macmillan Company. So, let's go ahead and start. Lizzie went to the park. Lizzie froze. Do not be worried, said the old man of the dog timidly. Does she bark, asked Lizzie, with worry anyway. Not at little children, said the old man. Does she bite? asked Lizzie anxiously. Only her food, said the old man, a bit anxious also, but with sparkle. Go ahead, give Cecile a pat. Feeling reassured, carefully, oh carefully, Lizzie patted Cecile. Cecile sat soft and still. She seemed to enjoy those paddings. I patted a dog, Lizzie said quietly. A small thing, but big, said the old man, quietly too. Shall we walk, Cecile? He ventured in his quiet way. Lizzie felt uneasy. Do not be worried, said the old man. Cecile will adore walking with a child. She is quite adoring being with you, the old man said shyly. How springingly she walks. Lizzie walked springingly too. Walking with a dog. A small thing, but big. She is a good dog, Lizzie said, patting Cecile. All dogs are good if you give them a chance. Would you like to hold her leash? How? asked Lizzie, a little fearful. Just so. Lizzie held the leash just so, and she and the quiet old man and the quiet dog, Cecile, walked quietly around the park. A small thing, but big. You know, ventured the old man, I believe you could take a little walk with Cecile by yourself. I could? You could. Lizzie and Cecile walked around the park, hesitant at first, then springingly, oh springingly while the old man watched from a bench. Walking a dog alone, a small thing, but big. I walk Cecile, said Lizzie, aglow. Magnificently, said the old man, aglow as well. Before today, I was very afraid of dogs, Lizzie told him. The quiet old man replied, before today I was very afraid of children. The end. Thank you for letting me read with you today. Alright everyone, it's time for our next book. We're going to read How Do Dinosaurs Choose Their Pets by Jane Yolen and Mark Teague. Thanks so much, Scholastic, for letting us read this book. How does a dinosaur pick out his pet? Does he go on the prowl with a stick and a net? Does he head to the zoo and take home a big cat? And what does his mom have to say about that? 
does she drag a huge elephant back in a wagon with both its long trunk and its wee tail a dragon? Speaking of dragons, does she go acquire a high-flying beastie who loves to breathe fire? Does he pick out a boa constrictor for play? Does it look at his dog in a very odd way? Does he sneak an iguana inside of his cat? Or lead home a kangaroo by a long strap? Does he ask for a manatee, maybe a whale, or wish for a shark he can keep in a pail? Does she carry off tortoises, zebras, a mink, giving them hay and a cola to drink? Is that what you think? No, a dinosaur doesn't. She knows what to do and she never brings anything home from the zoo. He goes to a shelter or pet store or farm to find a small creature who will do no harm. He brings home a kitten or hamster or pup. Then he can teach manners as they both grow up. <laughs> Look how small they are. <laughs> she cares for her pets and gives love even more. Big hugs to your friend, little dinosaur. The end. Thanks so much, Dr. Miller, for reading with us from the Lincoln Animal Hospital. I'll see you guys later. Bye!